ready? I was ready. <laughs> ready as I'm gonna be. So, hey everyone, this is uh, Daniel, the product marketing manager here at, uh, at Ansel, and I'm actually here with DJ. I am the uh, lead software systems engineer for a soy extrusion factory here at Dumont Farms in upstate New York. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> really beautiful out here, and uh, we're enjoying the scenery in the day, and actually, Dumont Farms. Uh, based on the tour that you gave us a while back is actually uh, pretty advanced right in in what it's doing could you just maybe like tell a little bit about like the process and what you guys are doing absolutely um, what we're doing is we're we're taking a raw soybean uh, directly out of the field and we're uh, we're drying it down we're running it through a cleaning process and then it goes through a, a, a a light grind we basically quarter the bean uh, fifth the bean so to say and then we run it through a, an extrusion process, process which uh, shapes the material and heats it significantly. And then we uh, run it through an oil press. And that produces uh, two things, a vegetable oil, soy oil, and a press cake. The uh, press cake is then cooled, uh, crushed, ground, and then uh, used as a very high quality, uh, very nutritious feed for uh, dairy cows. And uh, soy oil has numerous industrial applications. Yeah, so we have very little waste. Yeah, that's awesome. Where do you get involved? What, like, what parts of this whole system are you, are you controlling? So my role is uh, basically to automate everything that's possibly to be automated within the system of what we just uh, talked about. And uh, so process control, data point collection, data analysis, uh, sequence automation, uh, factory automation in general basically um, even from turning the lights on and off okay so yeah pretty pretty much everything pretty much and everything. you have you were saying how you have different levels where some of the kind of some of the automation is pretty basic just on and off stuff and some of it's a little more fine-tuned right we have uh, you know s s tasks as simple as opening and closing a, a valve or a gate uh, turning a motor on and off uh, to complex algorithms of uh, you know Amp loads on certain motors may require a, a, a feeding motor to speed up or slow down. So there's, it, it can go from the simple to the complex. Yeah. And where, if you can describe, where is the, the kind of what you're running on Ansel? Where does that fit into the big picture? Okay, so Ansel is uh, really the, the, the connection between the user or the plant uh, worker and the automation. It is also the connection between the data collection, the data, the data mining we do from the process. Uh, it helps us uh, store and analyze the data. So it's a multifaceted device for us, uh, work, working very well so far. Okay. Could you just kind of break it down a little bit by the different VMs uh, that you are, the different servers that you, and applications you have running? Absolutely. Uh, the, we're running four VMs currently on the Ansel, uh, probably looking to expand that once uh, we get further down the road. We're running a uh, primary domain controller. That's the basic, you know, Windows domain controller, Active Directory, uh, very straightforward, very simple, not a lot of uh, horsepower required. Um, and then we have the process application, or the process automation primary application system server which is a mouthful. You that is. P-A-P-A-S-S. P-A-P-A-S-S, yeah. Yes, right. that's a mouthful, but it's the Process Automation Primary Application System Server. And that is uh, one of the VMs uh, wholly in itself. And that uh, VM is responsible for collecting the data from the Allen Bradley program, Programmable Logic Controller, um, and then interfacing that with the uh, user interface. Um, so that VM does quite a bit of work. And in plain English, what work does it do? <laughs> so I can understand. Plain English, it takes the little ones and zeros and makes it into pretty pictures for you to okay. look at on the screen. Okay, yep. gotcha. And is that then also communicating that elsewhere or just, just it's all within itself? It's taking that in and it's giving it back to you so you can make decisions based off right. of it. Right, what that does is that is it serves the application content for the factory. Um, uh, some of the other VMs will reference that VM okay. to serve that content um, to users. Uh, for example, the uh, the third VM that we use is the um, it's a actually a Thin Manager. Uh, we have Thin Manager running on it. That's also a Windows Server VM. But that con that server uh, 
basically interfaces with the primary application system server and it serves that content to thin clients, um, everything from iPads to desktops to your phone, maybe even your watch, we haven't tried that yet. But, uh -huh. um, but basically allows the plant workers to have an iPad in hand um, and it talks you know, through the network to, the, to our Ansel. It serves that content, allows them to activate, deactivate uh, motors or processes within the factory on site, standing right where they need to be with the content they need right in their hands. So that's a um, pretty powerful tool. Okay. We, where does then that interface with the automation part where, you know, it doesn't, someone doesn't need to be with an iPad, but it's just happening in an automated fashion? Right. So as part of the programmed automation, we have um, certain processes that you can go into an automatic mode. So for example, the primary grinder supply bin has a full and an empty sensor on it. and also has a fill sensor on it. So when the fill sensor triggers, it would tell the program to, we need to fill that bin. Okay. So that would activate the cleaning sequence and it would fill the bin and it would continue to fill the bin until the full sensor is, indicates and that would then tell so that's it to stop. Feeding into one of your, the virtual servers running on the Ansel. Absolutely. And that pushes it out to that, P, what was it, the, the primary the control, the PLC yep. that we had looked at, yep. which then controls all the motors. Right, and, and that actually that. turns it on and off. Okay, right. awesome. Uh, and and you can do all that information as it's happening live across the Ansel in those, the iPad or okay. whatever device, mobile all device. All right, that's, that's kind of clear now. Yeah. It's all, uh, Awesome. It's even clearer now than when we were doing the tour, and yeah. <laughs> it took two times to kind of make it sink in. It's, uh, it's there's a lot going on back there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. And then what about the fourth? Is the that fourth worth is we're actually or? running. A, it's a historian server. Um, it's a uh, basically a database server, uh, higher end database uh, a, a data collection. We're collecting over uh, right around 200 data points uh, multiple times a second. Um, and we're storing that data for uh, process analysis um, and of course uh, you know to make the best product possible we, yep. need, we need the data we need to mine the data we need to, to analyze the data so uh, the, the people in the lab can make the right decisions on temperature adjustments and what process adjustments to, okay. to get the best product we can and that's also probably referencing the that PA is, yep. pass that yep. you had talked absolutely. about absolutely got it yep. pull that together yep so there's three there that are working pretty hard all the time yeah um, and uh, Farming well for us. Nice. Yep. So I'm curious to kind of hear more about how would you have put this together? Because obviously the An Ansel is not the typical, you know, probably the, it's not the first go-to right. um, that someone turns to and they say, oh, I'm going to do factory automation. Oh, let me go with Ansel. Right. So what were your other options and um, what were you thinking through then? Uh, Alan Bradley likes you to, to go with uh, their brand of everything, of course. Um, which is very high-end industrial rated equipment. Um, it's also and a very- just to, just to pause you, software and hardware, right? Software, they kind of yes. Have the software, hardware. They like to sell things as a package deal, which is which is great, but that uh, that convenience comes with a price tag and a, and a fairly large price tag. Um, we're a, basically a startup in this business uh, in the area as far as making this express soy and we were looking for um, cost-effective solutions that would not affect performance. Uh, performance is key, and cost-effective, of course, is right behind performance. Um, so with that being said, I did the due diligence on the Ansel and decided that it was worth a try. It looked like um, it would do what we needed it to do and perform the way we needed it to perform. And to date, it has done exactly that. Yeah, awesome to hear. Yeah. Um, what What are some of the, I guess, challenges or some of the, the stuff that you came across trying to implement? Because um, obviously it's different than just getting something out of the box. Uh, absolutely. As a it. as a Windows guy, uh, I've worked in Windows boxes my whole my whole career in automation and in uh, you know programming, uh, network administration. It's always it's all been Windows uh, based. Windows boxes, so uh, I was a little nervous about getting a Linux box uh, shipped to my desk, but uh, I was very impressed with the ease of use, uh, the intuitiveness of the, the Ansel software. It was very user-friendly, um, great tech support articles. I actually had um, very little trouble with the Ansel itself. Now. Um, some of the images that Alan Bradley provides to get their software to run 
didn't care for uh, the Linux environment, which um, I found it's just easier to do clean installs with their software, but not a, that was more of a Ansel. Not, it was not an Ansel issue. That was more of a, the software I was putting on it. Yeah. They they had some cookie cutter images basically that meant to go on a Windows box that I tried to convert into a Linux image. Just a waste of time. Don't just don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> just spool up spool up the provided templates that you guys have on there and install the software directly. That's what yeah. I ended up okay. doing, and that was perfect. It worked so you... perfect. <laughs> So you spun up one of our Windows templates and then just installed it directly yeah, on there. Absolutely. And going with the provided images, raw install, much better, much faster. I saved myself a lot of time doing it that way. It's just much easier to do it out of the box the way you guys recommend. Okay, yeah. awesome. Yeah. Uh, any other just kind of tips or, or, or different things that you came across that were different in the process? Oh uh, boy. Whether good or bad. And if not, that's fine. Well, I, geez. I don't know. It was the first, uh, like I said, first Linux experience I had, and I, I, it wasn't that bad. Don't be afraid, guys. Get, get in it. Get in it. You'll be all right. <laughs> uh, thank you. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. And last but not least, maybe you, you know, kind of already covered this, but then, yeah. How, I don't know. How do you feel about it now? How's, you know, what are you, what are you thinking for the future? Just um, I can't wait to talk my boss into getting another one, so I can uh, mirror that thing up. Um, <laughs> No, it's it's really done well. Um, you know, long-term performance. Of course, the jury's out on that still, but I, it looks like it's going to do a great job, and we're uh, we're uh, happy to to be a we're a happy customer at the moment. How's that? Sweet, <laughs> that's awesome. Thank you. I use Ansel because it's easy. Sweet. Yeah. Thanks, DJ. Yeah. Thank you. Woo! That wasn't so bad. <laughs> that wasn't bad.